I wonder if you've ever had this happen to you. You're slumbering in your couch on a peaceful afternoon and suddenly the dog starts to bark and you get up to see what all the commotion is about. You feel the adrenaline rush and your heart is racing and suddenly things start getting done in your house that perhaps should have been getting done a long time ago. This illustration serves to show us a little bit about how pro tandem works. Let me see if this little story will help illustrate what happens in our cells. We used to have a little dog we named Whippet. She was a Shetland sheepdog and they are really an amazing breed. They instinctively love to herd and to keep everybody together. They love to bark and as such they are very effective at sounding an alarm. If you've ever had a Sheltie, you know exactly what I mean. Somebody comes to the door, rings the doorbell, and all of a sudden everybody's stressed, everybody's activated by her barking, and things start to happen inside the home. Now imagine that your house is like a human cell. In your home you have couches that the kids like to lay on. They won't get up until they are motivated to do so either by noise, having to go to the bathroom, or because they're hungry. Mom is in the kitchen and she generally regulates what goes on inside the home. If any cooking is to be done, she is either doing it or directing others as to how to cook. Her kitchen, like most kitchens, has a pantry and a refrigerator. They are full of ingredients and or appliances used for cooking and preparing awesome meals. Now imagine it's a relatively quiet Saturday afternoon. Mom is in the kitchen planning dinner. She's feeling a bit overwhelmed and tired of asking her son to do the chores. He is firmly nested on the couch playing video games and there's a little Sheltie dog laying peacefully beside him. She contemplates how to apply Newton's first law of motion. You know, a body at rest will tend to stay at rest unless acted on by an outside force. Now for the sake of our illustration, we're going to give each of these elements names that correspond to parts of our cells. The Sheltie dog is named Kinase, the boy is named NRF2, mom is DNA. The pantry and the refrigerator are named the cytoplasm, and the kitchen is called the mitochondria. Here is a simplified diagram of a cell with each of these parts. So DNA, or Dina if you prefer, really knows how to cook. You might say that she has the blueprint for growth. She's standing in the mitochondria, or the kitchen. She's retrieving things from the cytoplasm, or the refrigerator, and pantry, and she prepares the food that will give the family energy. NRF2, or Nerfy if you will, is absorbed in his video game and relatively inert. Kinase, the Sheltie dog, is dormant at his side, but always alert. Now as long as Nerfy, NRF2, remains inert, and there are chores that he should be doing that are not getting done, the family starts to get stressed, especially Mom. In fact, there's so much to do that Nerfy just felt overwhelmed, and so he just doesn't even bother. As a result, the garbage that he is supposed to be removing is piling up. His room is a mess, his net homework isn't done, his grades are failing. The family is stressed. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and instantly Kainese races to the door, bark, bark, barking. This jolts NRF2, Nerfy, and he makes him get off the couch. He goes to see what the commotion is and he tries to quiet Kainese down. In the process, he wanders into the kitchen or the mitochondria. His mom gets the bright idea that she's going to offer to make him some cookies, providing he gets his chores done. Suddenly, Nerfy gets active. He starts vacuuming floors, getting ingredients, removing garbage, and generally getting things done. He's throwing all the switches. His mom teaches him how to make the cookies. He eats them, gets happy and productive, and now there's a lot less stress in the home. This is sort of how Pretendum works. Protandum is the doorbell ringer. It's an NRF2 activator. And it does it by making a change to kinase and in turn makes a change to NRF2 and gets it moving. Once that NRF2 gets into the mitochondria, 
it starts throwing switches that modulate gene expression. Some of these genes upregulate certain enzymes and downregulate other enzymes. This starts the process of cleaning up the overload of free radicals stressing the body. One of the enzymes that gets upregulated is called superoxide dismutase, or SOD. It is a powerful antioxidant that scoops up free radicals at a ratio of 1 million per second. In addition, other enzymes such as catalase and glutathione peroxidase are responsible for gene expression that downregulates inflammation. This combination provides a one-two punch, reducing the overwhelming load of free radicals that cause such stress to our bodies. This is very significant because it's not possible to take in enough antioxidants to clean up the overwhelming load of free radicals that bombard us from multiple sources every day. But now it is scientifically shown that protandem is the first product ever that regulates gene expression, allowing your body to produce, produce its own antioxidants. There are numerous university studies that show how protandem activates NRF2 and modulates gene expression. This quote from Washington State University in January 2015 summarizes the positive results shown by this research when it says, quote, This is the most extraordinary therapeutic and most extraordinary preventative breakthrough in the history of medicine, unquote. Bold words. Is it too bold to say that protandem is the discovery of our times and that it is equivalent to the discovery and development of penicillin at the start of the 20th century? Perhaps, perhaps not. Isn't the science compelling enough to justify using it for ourselves?